Hi and welcome to VMware Cloud Director 101. My name is Guy. My name is Julian. And today we're going to talk about some of the concepts around vCloud Director and address some of the use cases. Now Julian's the, the expert in vCloud Director, so I'm going to be asking the questions here of how some of the core concepts work. And we're going to start this series by looking at a basic example um, with a service provider with, uh, let's take it down here, with a, uh, a number of vCenters today and a number of clusters behind these vCenters and resource pools. And Julian, you can fill in the details here later on. Um, and poten potentially some, some customized workloads, some specialist workloads like uh, SAP, for example. And let's just put this all on. Actually, this will go to here. Okay, so we want to introduce the concept of vCloud Director. So for those of you who have never never seen vCloud Director before or heard of it, so how does this work with uh, vCloud Director? How does the, the vSphere infrastructure operate with vCloud Director in June? So the whole purpose of vCloud Director is it's an abstraction layer above. You build it above your vSphere infrastructure or vSphere infrastructures because you can have multiple beneath. And the idea is you can represent all of those resource pools, all of those resources you allocate to customers in a separate portal above the infrastructure. So the whole idea is we abstract out, we can have better enforcement of multi-tenancy and have different pool resources available to different customers easily. And of course with eCloud Director comes a lot of the advantages of automation. Right, so how would that, um, so I've got existing resource pools today, what type of information then is pulled up into the vCloud Director infrastructure? So resource pools will be familiar to vSphere administrators. The whole point of them is they can allow the service provider to create allocated pools of resource. So that means memory, that means CPU allocations. And with that comes certain policies like reservations, how much capacity do I reserve up front in the platform, and how much is flexible, what element of that is flexible. And then of course there are limits. So you typically won't run a platform with no limits, you will set limits. So those two are features and characteristics of a resource pool. Okay, so today we run, um, you know, for example, we run managed services in these vCenters here, so in car, vs out. Um, you know, they are a shared infrastructure, but we don't allow kind of tenants any access to them, obviously, because they're going to be able to see other tenants' workloads. It's all heavily controlled, that layer of access. How does vCloud Director help us with that sort of model? Are we able to offer anything more now we have vCloud Director on top of that? So put simply, if you have vCloud Director in your environment, customers don't have to connect to vSphere directly. So there's no visibility of, of vCenter, there's no need to connect directly, and that includes console access to virtual machines. That's all proxied effectively through vCloud Director in a self-service portal. So a key part of this is self-service functionality. No longer are customers going to the service provider and raising tickets to get them to carry out administration tasks. In fact, they're going through vCloud Director to work with it on a self-service basis, and that frees up admin teams. So I can then offer, shall I draw vCloud Director on top of here? I'll just draw a box for now. So now I can then offer my, my consumer, or my customer, who today you know, comes and accesses his infrastructure via um, some sort of VPN. Uh, today, he now with vCloud Director, he will be able to access a self-service UI, and all of this is abstracted from him, but he'll still be able to play with his his uh, VMs and um, whatever else I build for him in there. Exactly. So the client comes in through our HTML5 based portal. So it's accessed via a browser. No specialist tools have to be installed for accessing the portal. And then they see what we call virtual data centers. These are logical abstractions of a virtual data center with all the components you'd expect. So allocations of storage, networking, and of course the VM compute workloads themselves. What they don't see are the underlying components of the infrastructure. So things like VMware uh, vSphere port groups. Um, data stores, these are all hidden away. So we're down to abstracted objects of logical data centers, virtual networks, and it's all driven by policy. So another important point here, I think we're going to come to this in a minute, but we're going to quickly mention this then. So here we have the resource pools configured in vCenter, pulling that resource up into a provider virtual data center, as you said, and then carving that up into multiple organization VDCs virtual data centers for tenants then to consume. And that's one model. And we're going to talk about allocation models and uh, reservations in the next session. 